are not prepared. Welcome to another top 5 with Crystal 5. The new Fractured and Alterac Valley expansion has been around for less than 20 hours, but we're already seeing some decks being quite popular and quite with the good win rate too. A lot of you are still asking me what decks you should be playing, so in this video I will give you 5 great examples of decks that can take you into high ranks. Obviously it's still not a great idea for you to be crafting anything cause the meta is very new and some of these decks definitely look like they're in the nerf zone. So keep that in mind and protect your dust from hasty decisions. Would be awesome if you drop a like and a subscribe to the channel if you still haven't and tell me in the comments what's your favorite deck so far as well. Now let's check them out. Starting off with the deck everybody was afraid is gonna be top tier when the new expansion comes out, Quest Warlock. I'm not gonna go deep into this one, but obviously Quest Warlock is gonna be trumping everybody's chances of actually playing something very different. Quest Hand Warlock is still tier 1 and just a few new cards included in here for it to be even worth mentioning as a new possible deck. But yeah, we have Deadlich Tamsin and a couple of full blown evils included into your standard Hand Warlock. You're still gonna be destroying every control deck out there just because you're running Tamsin and you're still gonna be able to control the board early on and finish off the game with a big Battleground Battlemaster with a few giants. But this is just gonna be a dishonorable mention because we really need to see some changes to Quest Warlock if the new expansion is to prevail. So instead, let's talk about an actual new Warlock archetype that is also very strong but let's not kid ourselves, it's not stronger than the quest deck. Anyway, this is the new humongous OTK Owl everybody was speculating about before the expansion dropped and it actually has the stats to back it up. Like I said, Quest Warlock so far has 68% win rate, which is absolutely absurd because the second best deck is at 61.5. Hey, look at that face hunter, somebody told you that it's gonna be good after the new expansion drops, right? But yeah, this Warlock deck is actually sitting at 60.9% noise, so it's not that bad at all. We have not that many new cards included in here, but like I said, we do have the Owl, Dead Lich Tamsin, Tamsin Phylactery, and that's about it for the new cards. Anyway, the game plan is simple. You survive the early game with your tons of early game survivability tools, including cards like Karma Vendor, Touch of Naf Regime, Drain Soul, and let's not forget you have a lot of ways of improving that spell damage for you with Blood Mage Talnos and more Gardificer, and you can also double up your stuff with Tamps and Realm. It's basically Quest Warlock but without the quest. And you also have a ton of card draw with Backfires and Pantras and Tor Guides and such, and you can discount all of that with your ruined Mithril Rod. The OTK here is pretty cool, and what you need to do is have your Homunculus Owl dead, and after that you fill the board with Wicked Shipment or other small minions just because you've discounted them with your Mithril rods and you play Tamsin's Phylactery and you can even trigger that at the same turn you've played it with your school spirits and that way you deal and that way you can deal a lot of damage to the opponent's face. It's a pretty interesting concept and if you want to try something different for Warlock which still doesn't feel too different from the other quest deck then you can go for the Owl version. But if I have to guess this deck might really get nerfed soon or at least get hit from the crossfire for the quest deck. Next up we have a Librum buff paladin which is actually working pretty well and it can do pretty crazy things too. We have the standard Librum package but we also have the Iron Deep Trog which is actually an insane minion to have in a buff deck like this because this can go very big and how else are you gonna kill something that's above 6 health for instance without using an actual spell. Even cards like Devolving Missiles might not save you because they're not very specific so it's indeed a very problematic card to deal with once it grows big. We have a bunch of buffs for that, as well as a Lance Bannerman. We also have the new Hold the Bridge, which is not bad at all. Sadie and the Scarlet, which can get pretty buffed with the Librams. And also the Stoneheart Vindicator, which is a pretty nice way for you to be fishing out your Librams, but also hold the bridge. Samro for removal as well as Carol Rome, and for discount too. Aldor obviously, as well as Devout Pupil, Lady Liadrin, Light Force Carol, the new hero card for Paladin, and we also have Varian and Librams of Hope, obviously. It's a pretty powerful deck, and some people even use it with Blessing of Authority, which can be really insane on the Trog, but it might be an overkill for this deck. It's not a cheap deck, but if you already ran Librum, you're probably not gonna be that far from this guy, too, even though we are running the Sadie and Scarlet and the Light Force Carol, which are new legendary cards. I'm not sure it's getting nerfed, so maybe it's not that bad of an idea for you to check it out if you're not missing too many of the cards. With Rogue not much has changed so far, even though the Burgo Rogue did seem pretty strong, I don't see too much stats supporting it yet. Basically for Rogue, if you have Quest Rogue, you can feel free to slap scabs in there and that's gonna be everything else pretty much remains the same, so maybe let's just skip ahead. 
with Shaman, like I told you, Freeze Shaman really feels strong, and this version seems to be working best so far. It's pretty close to the version I showed you in the last video, but here we also have room for a couple of Light Blooms, which are nature spells, so naturally you take out your Super Shire portals and take in Lightning Blooms instead, and that way you can cheat out some pretty good stuff very early on. We also have Boner, which is basically a fourth brilliant Macaw kind of effect for you, and you can abuse that with either your Macaws, or even your Snowfall Guardians, and stuff like Custodian and Wandmaker too. There's also a Snowblind Harpy in this version, so you have extra survivability, but all in all it's basically the same deck. It's very strong, and don't forget you can deal a ton of damage with your cheaty Snowbolt, and I do believe it's a mistake running only one in this version, because with a couple of these you can do insane amount of damage, after something like Baron Glacier has been on the board. Or even by just throwing a couple of frostbites to your opponent's face for literally 18 damage. Yep, it does deal that much damage with a couple of snowbolts. We also have Baron, which is really good, and Brucon actually feels pretty well in the deck as well, because it gives you a lot of potential late game against control -y decks. It's not a very cheap deck, but then again it's not very expensive for a control deck, so definitely give it a go if you're not missing too much again. And lastly, we have Big Priest back on the map. This deck has above 55% win rate so far, and it seems to be working pretty well for the Priest class. We have a couple of Gifted Anarus, so you can get some card draw, which has been a problem for Priest for quite a while. We have a bunch of early game control -y tools as well as value generation, Amulet of the Undying, which is pretty good as well. We're also running Vandar, so you can discount all of your big stuff. And here's the big stuff. Your Pearl Tusk, Spirit Guide, which can draw you a lot of cards couple of Light Shower Elementals, Undying Disciple for big removals, Soul Mirror, even Goliath Sneed, which is actually pretty interesting, but it is a mech. Also a couple of Morg Forge Fiends for protection, as well as your Demon Tag. Zerella, so you can get all of those back, and also Nazat. It feels like a pretty greedy deck, but it actually works out pretty well. So if you have been missing playing disgusting Degenerate Priest decks, this one might be right up your alley. I'm not judging, I also played Dress Priest in Wild. Other than that, for now, for Demon Hunter it doesn't seem to be going too great. For Druid, Aggro Druid should be at the top, but so far I'm not sure we're seeing the new stats. And it does seem some version of Anaconda Druid is doing well. For Hunter you're probably gonna be fine keeping on smashing some phase damage. With Mage, big quest Mage, for Mage, Big Mage is not doing that great so far, and for Warrior I'm not sure we're still seeing any new cards either. So I guess Quest Pirate Warrior is the best way for you to go for now. I will be doing another top 5 when we actually have enough data, so make sure to drop a subscribe and maybe ring that bell notification so you don't miss it. Thank you in advance. But yeah guys, these 5 decks so far are standing out from the bunch, so if you're in a hurry to try some new stuff, these can definitely do it for ya. Drop a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and also check me out on Twitch. Thanks for watching, I'm Crystal5 and I'll see you in my next video, or stream.